One of the most foundational concepts when it comes to PRI and asymmetry is the ability for us to push out of the right side and shift left. What I see a lot of people get focused on is the pelvis, and that's for a very good reason. The reason why we need to push right is so we can get the sacrum to turn left and shift us into left stance. Usually the muscles that help us do that are the right glute max and right glute hip AB ductors to create a turn towards the left side via their contraction. But the problem is, is a lot of people have a higher arch on their right side because this right foot is in a supinated state because the tibia right here is externally rotated. And I know this is a left foot, but hopefully you can visualize what this would look like if it was a right foot. But our body's gonna try to find what it doesn't have up or down the chain. In this case, we're looking down the chain at the foot. And the tibia here is going to externally rotate to help accommodate for a lack of external rotation on that side of the body, but also because we are bearing weight on the right side of our body, which allows us to find our heel better, which is more of a state of external rotation of the tibia. A lot of people struggle to find their right glute max in a lot of these PRI drills. The reason could be a couple of things, but a very big one is that people cannot create a reference of the inner heel and the ball of the big toe right here to create pronation of the foot to help push us over to the left side. If I see someone where this is the case and I can tell their foot can't pronate very well, then we can give them a couple of drills. We need a book that's at least an inch high, if not two, that we can keep the whole foot flat on aside from these toes. These toes from this knuckle forward are going to be completely relaxed the entire time. There should be zero tension whatsoever. Now it's very important when we do this drill to pay close attention to the cues I give because it's very easy to just go through the motions of this drill and not feel the right thing. So please go very slow and careful and listen to what I say and the cues I give in the order that I give them. To set up for this, again, we've got the toes off, but you might have a little bit of your pinky toe, last toe on it a little bit, and that's okay, but we're mostly focused on keeping the toes off as much as we can without losing this first knuckle contact right here. That should be completely flat on the book, not hanging off at all. Same thing with the pinky toe and the complete pad of the heel here. Now we're gonna get in a slight split stance position and we have pretty much no weight on this back leg. It is just hanging out. We have maybe 5% of our weight on there, but it's really just a kickstand more than anything else. And the heel should definitely be off the ground on that back leg. Here, we're focusing on feeling the heel, specifically the inner heel, and this right here, lateral pinky toe knuckle, and also specifically right here, this big toe knuckle. Now, it's important to start that we have a very vertical shin angle here with a slight degree of knee bend. And then we're going to incline our trunk slightly over that without losing that vertical shin angle. And our arch should be in a relatively high position to start, depending on what your foot looks like. Now, we should be able to feel our glute max right here on the stance side leg before we even go forward. If you do not, then it is very likely that you are too upright or you're not feeling those foot contact points or your knee is too straight. So focus on getting that a little bit of glute. It's not gonna be significant, just a little bit of glute max. And then we're going to bring our center of mass, meaning our trunk and our shin forward together at the same time without losing that heel. And as you do that, you should feel that arch slightly drop more or less depending on what you're originally capable of with pronation and then your glute should really start to kick on more and more the more forward you go. You don't wanna to go too far forward. A lot of people go way too forward here and they'll just turn it into a knee over toe thing, but in order to get true pronation, our center of mass has to go forward over the midfoot. So this is what we're training. We wanna aim this knee towards your second toe right here. That will help you get the ability to get the arch down here. The tempo for this would be to go forward for about three seconds, getting to your end range without losing that heel or the big toe or the little toe, specifically right here and here, but not losing this on the outside toe. And as soon as you feel like you're going to lose your heel pressure point, you're probably at your end range. So hold that for about a second or two and then come back slowly. And you should still feel those points in your foot. 
And then next time you go, just try to go a millimeter or a centimeter further. Do not try to go too far forward too quickly or you will lose what you're trying to achieve on this. So please just ease your way into it going really slow. We are using wedges from Anatomy in Motion from Gary Ward. He has wedges specifically for this, but you could also use a couple of wedges that could be used for something like squatting. The lower generally the better. There should be a little bit of elevation to them, but you can also use regular squat wedges as well. The placement of these wedges is essential to the success of this exercise. So this wedge right here is underneath the knuckle of the first and second toe. The actual toe itself will be slightly off, but it's important to get the knuckle of right here and here as the third, fourth, and fifth toes are flat on the ground. On the back, that wedge is underneath the outside heel and the middle heel, whereas the inside heel is flat on the ground. So it's underneath the outside half of that heel right there. Now we're going to get into a kickstand position. So we're on our toes in the back with the heel definitely off the ground. Almost no weight is back there. Most of our weight is here. And we need to make sure that we're keeping the foot contact points of this first knuckle right here. The little toe should stay on the ground and also that heel back here. We should never lose those points at any point during this exercise. So Trevor, what I'll have you do is push this knee over the second and first toes as you open up your hips a little bit. And then that arch should go down and we should feel that happening to a certain extent relative to your pronation abilities. And then we're gonna come back, closing up the hips a little bit, making sure we're going nice and slow, really slow, really controlled, and making sure that knee is going as far as we can without losing any of those foot contact points I mentioned earlier. But there's another consideration within our day-to-day -day lives, and that is, can we sense that right arch working throughout the day as we walk? There's a really cool little trick you can use that I got from Neil Hollinan, who's another PRI practitioner on YouTube, where he makes a paper towel arch with literally just half of a paper towel. All you would do is you would fold it over, and you would fold it a couple more times until it's about yay big. Put it right here inside your sock between the heel and the ball of the big toe on the inside. What kind of shoes you wear definitely influence this as well, but that might be a different video for a different day. The point is, is that this can be a really good little trick you can use in order to give yourself something to push into after acquiring better pronation with that right side through those drills. So I see a lot of people that can't find this right glute because this foot can't pronate very well. I would know this through just a basic test where I see if they can push their knee over their toe, a basic dorsiflexion drill. I'll see what that arch does. And if it doesn't drop, which is very common, then we know we have some work to do. So if you're doing the traditional right glute max activity and you just can't find that right glute or it doesn't feel quite right, try looking at your foot, seeing what it's doing, and checking out these exercises that might help you increase your pronation reference on the right side and ability to pronate, which will carry over to being able to find your right glute better in activities. It can be argued that this right glute max is one of the most underactive muscles in the entire body relative to other muscles with large surface areas because this right foot usually doesn't want to pronate very well. You'll know you're having success with these right glute activities when your right side external rotation measures improve in your hip. That would mean that you have better femoral external rotation and also hip flexion. You'll also know you're having success at the foot because when you stand up and walk around right after you do a drill, you should feel like you're pushing off your right side naturally more without thinking about it. Also, your knee flexion measurement is a more objective measurement of that.